morning, brothers and sisters. Saints of the Most High God. I enjoy the, the themes that we discuss at these meetings, and there is there is no theme more central than the blood of Christ. Amen. The uh, topic that I will be speaking on this morning is the church purchased by the blood. Uh, you are probably all familiar with the passage where this text is taken from. It's in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. But uh, I'll briefly review that just to refresh your memories, or perhaps if you're not familiar with it yet. This is when the Apostle Paul is saying his final farewell to the Ephesian elders. The Apostle had decided to go to Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost and celebrate the feast there as is Jewish custom. And uh, he decided that in spite of the fact that he had heard many reports and rumors that there were those that waited for him there to do him harm and to stop the preaching of the truth. But he was determined to go anyway, not fearing for his life knowing that the gospel, he could go there and preach the gospel. He knew the Lord would open an opportunity there, so he was determined to go, not caring for his body. So in view of that, he, he suspected that he would probably never see these Ephesian brethren again, and he had spent three years there. So he had made some very close acquaintances in the Lord there. These were the elders probably that he had chosen, that he had ordained if you will men of God that had received the truth that he had given unto them and so it was with a, a lot of heartfelt words that that he wanted to give unto them that's the reason he called them to meet him there and so uh, the words that he wanted to give them of course were going to be the most important things he wasn't going to fill them with a lot of fluff he wasn't going to say uh, Say hello to the wife and kids for me and I'll be seeing you later. No, what, what Paul is going to say to these men now is, is at the core of his ministry. Because he knew he would probably never see them again. So what he said he wanted them to remember. After he had left and after they would hear of his imprisonment, after they would hear of his death, he wanted them to remember this that he's going to tell them. So he reminds them of his ministry among them, how that that he walked among them as an honest man, a meek, and a humble man. And he reminded them that and confirmed his testimony that he indeed was one of Christ's apostles. The truth that he spoke, bearing witness. He reminded them of the truth that he, he didn't hold back anything from them. Whatever was profitable, whatever God had given him, he gave to them. And so he reminded them of that. And then... He had just one word of instruction. I, I found that interesting. That he didn't give them a long list of things. Now do this. Here's how you handle this in the church. And, and, and here's your next step in the procedure. And so on and so forth. He just really, when you examine the text, he had one thing to tell them. And that was to feed the flock of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. That, that was really, that summed up the whole thing that he wanted to say unto them. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock of God over which the Holy Ghost hath made you guardians, protectors, leaders, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing this flock that he has purchased. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch, watch, and remember. <clears throat> so you can see here that these are urgent words. These are, you can sense the tone of jeopardy in what Paul is saying. There's an urgency in, the, in this admonition that he gives unto the elders. And the jeopardy is because of the blood. It's because the church was purchased with his blood. <clears throat> and when it comes to the church, you're, you're probably wondering, what is he going to say about the church? And that's because, as you know, the church is a very controver controversial subject. It's been debated and argued and fought over 
for nearly two millennia now. And there are not only differing opinions between people about the church, but even in our own minds, the church sometimes causes controversy. <clears throat> At times, thinking of the church may bring wonderful memories and thoughts of kind and loving people, the people of God on their way to heaven. And in another context, mentioning the church may bring great sorrow, sighing and crying and tribulation. At times, it may even bring a troubled spirit to the point of being downright angry. <clears throat> How can something that is supposed to be so good be so controversial? It's because the church has been purchased with the blood of Christ. Amen. Now, just what or who is the church? Is it the whole world? Some say it is. Is it one certain denomination, or is it all denominations? Is it everyone who is a member of a religious organization? Is there more than one church? Or is there just, are there just several flavors of the church all within the one great body? Now, there is a reason why the church is so hard to define. It's because it's been purchased with the blood of Christ. Jesus Christ, the one who was in the world and the one who the world did not know. The world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received them, received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, in other words, not by genetic birthright. That's not why we're the sons of God. Nor of the will of flesh. It's not because of uh, some contrivance or method that man has made. That's not why. Amen. Not of blood. Not of the will of the flesh. Not of man. But of God. <clears throat> Amen. So don't be surprised when the church is hard to define. And when it's so controversial and it, it can't be understood by the world because it's been purchased with his blood this one that the world did not know don't be surprised even when these meetings are difficult to explain to some other people the world knew him not therefore the world knoweth us not Amen. the blood will cause misunderstandings conflict controversy between people and even within our own persons that's the nature of the kingdom of God. So if the, per the, the church has been purchased with the blood of this one, this Jesus Christ, then that, that necessarily thrusts the church into this arena of conflict. That's where it must be. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> so when it comes to defining the church, I think it's, it's best to think of the church as who and not what. Now, I won't go as far as to say it's wrong to refer to the church as, as an object, because the church is an object in a sense. It's the body of Christ, and a body is an object. And, and the scriptures do refer to the church as it in places. So I won't say that it's wrong, but in order to keep our minds in check, it's really it's necessary to think of the church as persons. Mm -hmm. As who? Because the church is people. Mm -hmm. People Amen. make the body. The church is not a charitable organization. The church is not an organization at all. Amen. The church is people. Amen. We should not make the error of referring to the day of Pentecost as the day when the church was instituted. Because the church was not instituted. Amen. And the church cannot be instituted. Amen. Because the church is people. Amen. The people that are called by his name, not by his label. Amen. Not a unique commodity, but a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye might show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, Amen. which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. So our Savior did not purchase an institution. He purchased a people because yeah. people can have faith. And people can believe. And people can praise his name. And people can worship in spirit and truth. 
and the people were made in his image for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. As you know, the church is referred to as the wife. In, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, it says the church is the, the bride, the lamb's wife. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is the passage in Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Not, not this body, but the body, his body, the body of Christ, the church. He is the savior of it. Amen. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, Amen. but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Now let me ask you, you gentlemen, let me ask you this. How many of you would like to be married to an institution? That doesn't sound very appealing to me. I know it probably doesn't to you either. An institution cannot love you. An institution cannot relate to you, cannot fellowship with you. How intimate do you think you could be with an institution? Well, Jesus didn't purchase an institution. He purchased people. People made in his own image. People that were made by the bridegroom and people that were made in the bridegroom's likeness, indwelt by the bridegroom's spirit, purchased by the bridegroom's blood, in love with and loved by the bridegroom, and living in earnest and joyful expectancy of seeing him again. Mm -hmm. Amen. A religious organization cannot do that. There is no correlation between wife and institution. They're just, it's not even apples and oranges. It's like rocks and apples. They're just, there's no correlation at all. A church cannot fit into that context, or a, an institutional church cannot fit into that context. Mm -hmm. John said that he saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Mm -hmm. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Amen. Now, there are only two identities that a person can have. Either you can be the possession of Christ, or you are the possession of Satan. Mm -hmm. You are either purchased by Christ, or you've, been, you've allowed yourself to be bought by Satan. <clears throat> There are no layers in between Christ and the church. We do not belong to the elders. We do not belong to the assembly. We do not belong to the denomination. We belong to Christ. There are no layers in between. He purchased a people. <clears throat> and certainly this is a blessed condition to be his possessions. Amen. Because all the promises of God in him are yea and in him our amen unto the glory of God by us. So we do not join the church or go to church or give tithes and offerings unto the church. It's all Christ. We do not belong to the church. For ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. But this is something that, that direly needs to be known in the church today that ye are not your own mm -hmm. this body is not my body it does not belong to me it was purchased and your bodies are not yours you were bought with a price and we can say west side christian church ye are not your own Amen. independence hill christian church ye are not your own mm -hmm. all the first christian churches all the churches of christ ye are not your own Amen. All the saints in all the earth and all the saints in glory, ye are not your own, ye are Amen. bought with a price, Amen. the precious blood of Christ. <clears throat> For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So quite simply, if you, if you must define the church, the church is the body of Christ, 
The body is made up of many members, and the members are people. So the church is people, the people of God, the people that have joined themselves to Jesus Christ by faith in his blood. Now, see, now we get into this arena of controversy because it's by faith. That's why the church is so hard to define, hard to locate. The reason for the controversy about the church is because the kingdom of God is observed by faith. It can't be defined with logic perceived by the, or perceived by the senses. We are saved by faith. Fellowship is by faith. Security in this jeopardous pilgrimage is by faith. And yes, even membership is by faith. <clears throat> faith is the secret, Amen. if you will, to overcoming the world. Secret because if you don't have it, it's a complete mystery. Mm -hmm. The victory that overcomes the world because its power is hidden from the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. The body of Christ is a people of faith. So that means that his church as a body is unidentifiable. Now, that, that's as a whole body. Now, as individuals, obviously, we can identify the people of God. We can see, see how a person lives and hear what they say and say, that's one of God's sons or that's one of God's daughters. But you cannot say about the church, lo, it is here or lo, it is there. That's it. That group over there, that's the church. You can't do it because, because it's not an institution. It's a people. It's a people of faith. <clears throat> and if, what if it could be identified? That it, would be, it would be terrible because Satan would have identified it and destroyed it long ago if the church could be identified as a certain group or institution. Amen. Amen. That would not work at all for us. We are kept as the apple of the eye and hidden under the shadow of his wings from the wicked that oppress and from deadly enemies who encompass us all about. Amen. The church cannot be labeled or understood because it is not of this world. It is the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ is light and salt and wheat, as the scriptures say. But among the wheat, there are also tares. And in this big net, there are all manner of fishes. And right next to fertile soil, there's also stony ground and thorny ground. Mm -hmm. And right next to one person who may be a son of God sitting in a pew, there right next to him might be one of the sons of Belial. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are liars and deceivers and ravening wolves in all of the different sects, but there are not any in the church. Amen. There may even be fornicators in the assembly but there's not a single one in the church. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Both will continue to grow together until the harvest, and he will separate the wheat from the tares and the sheep from the goats. For there must also be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest Amen. among you. Amen. The institution is Babylon, and the organizations have been set up by the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. You might as well just call it like it is. Amen. Satan wants to put his mark on the church because if it can be identified, he can destroy it. A church that can be seen with a carnal eye and that can be controlled and that can be made to observably grow by the knowledge and the formula of man negates the reason for faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's Amen. why the church is such a controversy. So hard to locate and identify. Jesus Christ and his kingdom cannot be seen with a carnal eye or understood with carnal wisdom. If it's not of Christ and purchased by his blood, if it's not of faith, then it must be some other way. It's by him whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. And he is just and the justifier of them which believeth in him. So it's by faith. It's by believing, not by belonging Amen. to a certain Amen. organization or group. If the church is obviously successful and observably victorious here and now, then what need do we have for prayer? What need do we have for for a comforter? What need do we have for a mediator? What need do we have for faith? 
if, it, if it's all here and now, why, why have hope? Why bother with it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so beware of religion as considered successful by the world, and it does not require faith. We are in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. So we know then that regardless of the state of the religious institutions, whether it may look wonderful, successful, and glorious, or whether the institution may not look so good, Maybe where you meet, there's not a whole lot of people who meet there. It doesn't matter. Amen. Because when Christ returns, the church will be ready and will be, not Amen. ought to be or probably will be. The church will be ready Amen. and in expectancy and waiting because it is the people that he has purchased with his own blood. Amen. Jesus said of the kingdom of heaven that it is likened unto a treasure hidden in a field. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Now, Jesus Christ bought the whole world. He said just, just a few verses before, before in this passage there in Luke, he gave the parable of the sower, and he said the field is the world. Now, he purchased the field, all of it. He paid for all the sins of the whole world, not our Amen. sins only, Amen. but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. However, we know that the whole world will not be saved. We know that there are some that will not, will not accept the atonement. But see, that does not mean that he paid more than he had to pay. Yeah. What that means is that the pearl is worth more than you may think it is. Amen. Amen. That the treasure is more of a treasure than Amen. perhaps we may see sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because it was for joy. For joy he hid it and went and sold all that he had to keep it. Yes. The church is the treasure and the church is the pearl. Amen. We are those righteous ones who will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. As David said, thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion, wherein thou hast Amen. dwelt. Amen. Now, there are many words in the scriptures that I'm sure you're aware that uh, we can't really adequately and thoroughly define by our dictionaries. There are certain words in the scriptures that we have to define them just by the way the Holy Ghost uses them. And this word purchased is one of those words. Now, you know, you can read in, in the book of Genesis how that Abraham purchased a field from the sons of Heth, and, and he and Sarah were buried there, but that wouldn't come close to adequately describing the type of purchase that we're talking about here. And you can read in the book of Ruth how that Boaz purchased Ruth to be his wife. Now, that's, that's getting a little closer to home. But still, it's just not adequate. It can't define or describe the purchase that we're talking about that Christ made with his own blood. There's never been and never will be a purchase like this. Amen. This, is, this is a purchase that's talking about buying. Yes, it's a buying and it's an owning, but it's so much more than that. This is a complete purchase. It's a purchase that involves all of the purchaser, not just something he gave like a, like a payment, but all of the purchaser. And it involves all of the ones being purchased. It's a complete and a whole purchase. You can go down the street here to the store and make a purchase. But regardless of how much you may pay for what you buy, even if you pay everything that you have, it still doesn't adequately describe. The, what you will end up with is a product that was sitting on the shelf waiting to be purchased. The product has no mind. It doesn't care who purchases it or, or how it's purchased, and it's only of a certain value, regardless of how much you may pay for it. The purchase won't change your life any. This is not the way Christ purchased the church. Amen. <clears throat> a people cannot be purchased in this manner or a people cannot be purchased in the, in the manner that I just spoke of. <clears throat> Someone, now you may ask then, well, what about the purchasing of slaves or men servants and handmaids? And that's, that was, had been going on for 
millennia. What about that? That was the purchasing of people, but but no, that that's not right either because you could purchase a slave at one time and that slave may have been your possession in a sense. You bought his bodily presence on your property and you bought his service, but you didn't buy his mind. Mm -hmm. You didn't buy his heart. Mm -hmm. You didn't buy his adoration of you. No, this is a different purchase that we're Amen. talking about. Amen. Christ Jesus even purchased the soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. To get a proper perspective on the completeness of the purchase, we have to go back before the transaction actually took place because the one who purchased us is the one in whose image we were made. He formed us from the dust of the earth and breathed the breath of life into our nostrils and made us living souls. We were, we were made from the beginning. From the start, we were made with this purchase in mind. <clears throat> Amen. Made of a high order to inhabit eternity with our maker. Christ's interest in people is not just a curiosity Amen. or a desire to own something unique like we might have when we want to own something or purchase something. For we, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain of our own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. He wants us because we are a part of him, not just a product. <clears throat> Amen. Christ's purchase of the church requires conscious effort of the will, and it requires action. It is inescapably demands of us thought and decision. Amen. And at the same time, the same purchase is of a nature that it will empower men to willingly and eagerly give themselves to him for his Amen. glorious purpose and even for our own glory. So much so that a man will plainly say, I love my master. Amen. I will not go out, but I will serve him forever. Mm -hmm. Plainly, of his own free will. Amen. Amen. So if the purchase is not of a mutual love and mutual agreement, then it's not this purchase. It's not the purchase of the blood. It is some other way. <clears throat> and certainly a proper assessment of our own situation will yield that type of... Of, of heartfelt giving, mm -hmm. of giving of ourselves freely and willingly to him. Amen. Because the purchase of Christ is also a saving purchase. It was the buying of a lost, destitute, and rebellious people. It's the restoring and a redeeming purchase. One that not only paid for the people, but also paid for our debts, bore our sins, and the punishment for them. It diverted the wrath of the judge and lifted the offenders up to a high place Amen. where they have obtained an inheritance in the kingdom of the very God of whom they had offended mm -hmm. and rebelled against. It's a purchase that actually transforms the person. Amen. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him with the one that gave himself for us mm -hmm. and has forgiven us all trespasses. Amen. What kind of purchase is this that raises us up to the one that purchased us? Amen. <clears throat> who paid the price for us, who him own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed, for ye were as sheep, not gone, but going astray. Mm -hmm. Amen. But now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And we were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation mm -hmm. in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Yeah. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he hath loved us, mm -hmm. even when we were dead in sins, has, has quickened us together with Christ. Yeah. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, 
and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So now, as a result of this purchase, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation, the people of God. <clears throat> I hope you won't grow impatient with me if I stress this one more time, that the church is people. See, you can't fit an institution into this context. It just does not work. You can't. The church is people, the people of God. <clears throat> there is no other purchase like this purchase. It paid the debt of sin for all mankind. It turns stony hearts into hearts of flesh. It enables the lame to walk and the blind to see. This purchase replaces hatred with love binds up the brokenhearted, proclaims liberty to captives, and sets prisoners free. This purchase makes weak strong. It gives joy to the sorrowful, transforms dead and condemned people into the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. It's the purchase that can make the soul that is stuck in the mire of guilt and shame to mount up with wings as eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. Amen. It's a purchase that takes foreigners and strangers and makes them fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Amen. This is a purchase with a purpose. <clears throat> Amen. And oh, the blessedness and security in being Christ's possessions, yes. owned by him, purchased by him. That's a good thing. That's something we love. We, it's just a blessed condition to be his possessions. Amen. As he prayed... In John chapter 17, those that thou hast given me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. And he Amen. prayed, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. See, we're, we're in the controversy, we're in the world, we're in the thick of the battle, but the purchase is a sort of purchase that keeps us in the middle of this. Amen. It, that's that's the, the purpose of the purchase is to put us in it and take us out of it, deliver us from it. <clears throat> Amen. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my he helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And we know that whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Yes. You see, we can't lose. Christ's purchased possessions are victorious no matter what may happen. By faith in his blood, we can't lose. He's Lord of the dead and the living. Amen. We know of his power to deliver out of this jeopardy. For we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old, how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out, for they got not the land in their possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Mm -hmm. Amen. Though the, though, pardon me, <clears throat> through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us Amen. from our enemies and Amen. hast put them to shame that hated us. Amen. In God we boast all Amen. the day long. Yeah. And praise thy name forever. Selah. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. 
a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Amen. What shall we say to these things, then? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. He has blotted out our sins and transgressions, firmly planted our feet on the solid rock. We are being built upon the sure foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. <clears throat> we have been made citizens of heaven, partakers of the divine nature. We've been given eternal life and promised an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved Amen. in heaven. Now this is the kind of purchase that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the purchasing power of the blood. Only the blood of Christ Amen. can have this kind of purchasing power. Amen. It changes people. <clears throat> Amen. And certainly, a purchase that has this kind of power would demand a high price. Mm -hmm. It was a costly, costly purchase. Amen. It was the blood of the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. <clears throat> Now, whether it is the blood of an animal or the blood of another human being or even your own blood, blood always seems to be an attention getter. What, no matter what it is, it, it just immediately it captures your eye, it captures your attention. The mention of blood or the sight of blood <clears throat> stirs up emotions, causes serious thought. That's because the life is in the blood. The shedding of blood means the passing of life. So men may boast about their bodies and about their possessions and about their achievements or about their wisdom, but a man will give all that he has to save his blood. Give all that he is to save his blood. <clears throat> Blood's the nourisher of the body. It is our identity. It is the life of a man. But when we talk about being purchased with his own blood, we are speaking of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. By humbling himself to the point of shedding his own blood, what we're saying is that's, that was the last thing that was left, was his blood. Before that, he gave all else. When he shed his blood, there was, there was nothing else left. That was it. It was the last thing. When we speak of shedding blood, we're saying he gave all, everything, all that he had, all that he had done, all of his life, all of himself, he gave his blood. <clears throat> after being slain from the foundation of the world, after he made himself of no reputation, after he took upon him the form of a servant, after he was made in the likeness of weak and mortal flesh, and after he was even, being, was even a poor and a humble man, not even a wealthy man among men, even after all that, after he gave all that, then he shed his own blood for our souls. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. And he gave it willingly. <clears throat> Amen. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Where he can be the mediator of the blood. <clears throat> Only his blood could make such a complete purchase because only his blood is of such great value. See, there was no other way. Amen. There is no other way than the blood of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the purchasing power of the blood is because it's his blood. The blood of our maker, the blood of our God. It is a tremendous sacrifice his unwavering love, his willingness to suffer for us that calls us and constrains us to action. Amen. It makes the appeal of the, to the mind of the thoughtful. It melts the stony heart. Mm -hmm. It causes the unwilling to change their mind. Mm -hmm. It saves the soul that is condemned. The entire redemptive work of God is centered on the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else that can possibly accomplish this purpose. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, 
Amen. who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats <clears throat> should take away sins. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth, Amen. expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Amen. That's the purchasing power. Amen of the blood of Christ. One time, for everyone, forever. Amen. Sanctified. The shedding of his blood put away our sins and purchased eternal life. His blood bought our heart's affection and it bought the promises of God for you. His blood bought us power and glory. His blood bought us the praise of God. His blood made the church and purchased the church. Amen. His blood has this purchasing power. And he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give you all things? Amen. If God did that for you, he'll freely give you all things. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours and ye are Christ. You people, you are Christ Amen. and Christ is God's. Amen. 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 Glory to God.